Boring, Dudu, Boring. There you go. Welcome all to the Master Leong Show. So today start a bit earlier lah. I am master nothing to do ah. Faster finish, faster go and watch my anime and relax ah. Chop chop ah. Dominic Teo. Oh, what ah? Yeah, today Hong Kong market very green. Hang Seng Tech up 3%. Alibaba up 2%. JD up like 5%, 6%. So like I shared over the weekend, China CPI uh, came in at uh, 0.7%. So that's way above analyst estimate of 0.3. So it beat market expectation. So we have a small recovery uh, this uh, today. So, but fundamentally looking at the China CPI, right, it's due to the Chinese New Year effect. Uh. So if we normalize it, we combine January and February is actually flat. But going ahead uh, because of the low base, so we shouldn't see deflation over the next few months already if the trend is sustained also like the march to june uh, cpi for china likely to be positive so china could be out of deflation already but i won't guarantee that uh. so yes chinese new year spending is very strong but it has to be sustained so uh, we continue to follow the data so jasper lim song song gao Zhuang, yeah green and us pre-market so now the daylight saving is back already. So now they turn on the daylight saving means uh, one one hour earlier. Am I right? I forget already. Now it's March 11. Yeah, March 11. Uh. So in US, it's called the daylight saving. Uh. So now it's early. I talk a bit. Yeah, so day, daylight saving. So yes. Yeah. So it usually starts at, at today. Uh. So to, to, today or, or, or yesterday start already. Uh. I think yesterday start March 10. Start already. Uh. So, uh, the clock is set forward one hour. So, uh, for like Asia timing, right? Instead of five p.m., we get the pre-market. Now it's four p.m. Uh, is the pre-market. Then nine thirty p.m. is the U.S. market open. So for those in the Asia time zone, like master is in Singapore, oh, then we we can look at the U.S. market earlier. We can sleep earlier. Then uh, for the US CPI, so today I will give my the preview. So US CPI for the month of February will be reported tomorrow, 8.30 uh, a.m. in the US and 8.30 p.m. for Singapore. So yeah, so, so that, that's, that's quite soon. So Tiger Shark, oh green green, yeah, healthy color. Dominic, what's the resistance for JD? JD, Baba, all this, no, no, no real resistance uh, because they have been depressed. Uh. So now it's like a recovery. Uh. So uh, I would say like SE and JD is, is moving very fast. So so just let them go. But Baba, I think is still at port at the $72 level. Hansen Index futures moving south. Uh. No need to see futures so tight. Uh. Every morning look at the Hong Kong market can ready. And I still see futures very tiring. Uh. Yeah, Lawrence Kwok, yeah, CPI is tomorrow, tomorrow 8.30 p.m. Asia time. LYS, let's go. Boon, welcome. Oi, Oi, uh, Sunflower, J Lo, Mr. Tokoyomi, Zhao Li, uh, Pixels Princess, welcome, welcome all. So, GG, market open 9.30 is better. Faster open, faster sleep. Huh? Anatas, welcome. Oh, comfort, they'll go uh, cut loss. Huh? Comfort, they'll go dinosaur stock. Huh? I've, I've won. Uh, it, for the past one year already, it's a good cut lah. Long term is is dinosaur lah. Invest in the future. Yeah, Hong Kong a lot of development. Hope can what be big. Yeah, Hong Kong, the economy last year was very bad. Hopefully this year is recovery. So later I'll talk about the China market. Today is a special. Also I cover Capital Land China Trust. Because yesterday I covered the five Tiger General, but many of you all keep asking me, uh, uh, whether the CLCT can buy or not. I keep getting this question, uh, although it's not a blue chip, you all keep asking me can buy or not. Uh, so I will cover it. So later you all have the we will have the answer. And so okay, stand up. Oh uh Jun An, Leong, Chong Costa, everyone is here. Let's go, let's go. It almost 8 p.m. already. Yeah, so let me begin. So uh what is doing very well now? Bitcoin above 70k and trading at 71.5k oh my god super explosive so you look at this are uh, the one month chart this is a one month chart eh? 
Oh, in the past one month from 47k level, it has rocketed to 71.5k. So it's almost, I think, one more month, it will be the mega event called the Bitcoin halving, which the miners that we work will be reduced by half. So I think this run up should sustain to or, or close to the this event. So uh, because the what, what for the miners right once you, you happen to have the halving right the reward is less so some miners will feel that it's less rewarding or to, to help help uh, and mine the, the bitcoin uh, so uh, i i don't know so the cost might increase uh, for for doing the transaction because whenever you do the transaction you need this uh independent miners to to do the complex calculation or to verify the transaction yeah so their reward uh, will be less then there, there'll be less miners and then uh is less attractive though yeah so the cost to trade bitcoin will increase so th that might be uh negative for for bitcoin so now it feels like a pump and dump or it feels to me like, like a pump and dump but but i'm very wrong on bitcoin i'm usually wrong uh -huh. so master is just talking cock like i i thought bitcoin like i say that it could test the 69k high then the 69k will be a re resistance which people will take profit in them i wrong master very wrong oh push all the way break past the resistance now is at 71.5k but another school of thought is that bitcoin has not broken uh, its previous high if you factor in inflation yes yeah, so today we're talking about inflation so the previous high was 69k but 69k was 2021 now it's 2023 so two and a half years have passed huh? your toilet paper your, your rice your oil everything is more expensive already so based on inflation bitcoin has not broken the high uh, so that's another thought but even now uh, that major investors re reputable one like bill Eggman says that bitcoin could go infinity that means it could have a mega rally then it explode and it could crash the system that that's very extreme thinking then he said that he might buy some bitcoin because of that then in the oil podcast chermat uh, palipatia says that bitcoin could go to two levels it could go to 80k it could go to 100k so a lot of bullish statements are being made on, on bitcoin for me, I don't know how high Bitcoin can go. But Bitcoin, the upward movement, right, has a lot to do with what is happening in the US. Uh, the US, the government, they are accumulating 1 trillion additional debt every 100 days. Uh, they now have 34 trillion of debt in their, in their books. So a lot of central banks across the world, right, uh, they are diversifying. Uh, they, they, they are buying less US dollar, they are buying gold. So Bitcoin mostly is rallying on one front is that, oh, it's the digital goal. On the second front is speculation. So I think both factor in. Uh. So you look at this chart, remember this chart, you see, uh, flat for, for this month, right? The, the first half of the month was flat, then suddenly this very sharp pull up, right? Or that parabolic movement. Same for gold, you know, this go uh th this is a one year chart so, so this is a a, a a one month chart but go you look at the past one month very parabolic from like almost 2000 level it bounced to now heading towards 2200 go usually don't move like that one Sud suddenly within one month go bounce uh, almost uh 10 percent from the one year chart right you can see that it has been hovering sideways for almost the entire year suddenly uh, bounce up so i think gold is a better traditional indicator so when people buy gold right it usually two reasons one is the fear of inflation they want to preserve their purchasing power or because the central banks keep printing and printing it becomes toilet paper <laughs> so the currency physical currency becomes a uh, toilet paper that's why people buy gold and also in the past, right, under the Bretton Woods Agreement, uh, by right, the US dollar is, is packed to go on, but they removed the, uh, the, the, the pegging. Also, US dollar is based on trust and the freedom of the country. <laughs> so the second reason why people buy gold, right, is that the uh, gold is like so-called 
the most defensive asset. Example, in times of war, in times of war, your country cannot bomb. You want to escape your country. What you, you think you can still sell your house? You think your currency is still useful? No. You, you take 10 gold bar, you put it in your backpack and, and you run to another country. The 10 gold bar might be able to help you buy a house. Huh? On average, right, in the US, right, historically, 10 gold bar is equivalent to a house. Huh? <laughs> so one gold bar may be worth like uh, 30k. Uh. Or you stack 10 gold bar in your backpack, 300k equivalent, you can buy a house. So be it whatever country you are, if you stack 10 gold bar, huh? And you, you you travel out, uh, then you, you can still survive with the tango bar, provided no, nobody rob you. Lah. So usually gold is the indicator of inflation, is the in indicator of fear, of war. So to me, right, it, it means two things. Huh? Is the market trying to tell us uh, that uh, inflation will remain high? Is the market trying to tell us that crash is coming? Also, this is the big, big too, too big question. Uh. So I also don't know. I also don't have the crystal ball to know what is the answer. So now we go back into the US market. So now all eyes is on the CPI. We saw the China CPI very good uh, coming out of deflation. Then the China market rally to 3%. So like I keep saying that uh, China market, I show you all the data. The worst is confirmed, but chop, chop my cucumber, worst is over. Or if, if this year still bear market, master quit YouTube. As simple as that. I believe this year is the year of the green dragon for, for China. The worst is over. Then uh, retail spending is coming back. Then uh, manufacturing has stabilized. Property should stabilize in, in the second half. And China has gotten out of deflation already. As for now, lah, unless things worsen again. So everything looks okay for China. It's on the path of recovery. As for US, right, I feel that it's like an engine that is stuck already. The engine is, is stuck. So, so you must be careful. So what's wrong with the US is that inflation is not coming down. Inflation is not coming down. Why? Because they are having two wars. Uh, like the Russia-Ukraine war is still ongoing. So they, they are pumping billions of aid every month to assist Ukraine. Then the Gaza Strip or the Middle East war is also ongoing. So there's two global war happening. And, and maybe that's why gold is, is going higher. And Bitcoin is represented as a digital gold. So all these are, are related. So what's the expectations of tomorrow, the, the CPI data? So over the past six months, the S&P, the US index has moved about 0 0.8 in either direction on the CPI data being released. So there is fear. There is fear that tomorrow, once the CPI is released, the market will drop. So what happened in one month ago when they announced the January CPI? It was worse than expected. It came in at 3.1 against the market expectation of 2.9. It remained sticky above 3%. So the market dropped 1.8% uh, uh, on that day, uh, uh, February 13th. So last month it dropped. So the fear is that it might be another down bar. I believe tomorrow will drop. I, I believe tomorrow will drop. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm quite bearish on tomorrow, but today they, they might sell in advance. That's why I, I usually I do the preview is right before it, but today I do it one day in advance because let you all know that it, it could be a bad day or it could be tonight they start to sell already, but tomorrow night could be a bad day. So the expectations is that inflation will come in at 3.1%. Or same as the, the previous month. And then call inflation 3.7 against previous month or 3.9. So the expectation is that Tuesday CPI report shows a 0.4% rise in prices from January. So that is still quite a huge uh, uh, gain in inflation. Oh. So, so uh, th th that is, th that is the, the, the problem. Also call CPI which strips out uh, food and energy, right? Uh, it is poised to rest 0.3. A climb of three point seven, so that's a quite a quite a high number. So that that is what will freak the market out. So what the analysts are commenting that if there are multiple months of unfavorable data, this will test the market ability to look past this, and further call into question whether this year's rally needs to be consolidated soon. In layman uh, language, is that if the CPI continues to be this bad, the market might crash. Or as simple as that. 
so inflation is very sticky like since like half a year ago i i warned you already i don't think inflation is coming down one straight line it's gonna be sticky at the three percent uh level and it, so far it has been true uh, for for at least for the more than the past half a year so we pick at 9.1 percent somewhere in in the mid of 2022 or uh, then inflation came down very sharply or uh, until the mid of 2023 also when inflation came down right everybody shout the worst is over fast is gonna cut rates uh, six or seven times or uh, bull market so in the second half especially the fourth quarter we, we saw a very strong uh, market recovery but since then from the mid of 2023 until now inflation has been above three percent or i don't look at the core inflation bullshit uh, the core inflation strip off energy uh, ship all food uh, that one you common folks don't need to eat food man. as a fact you serve the common folks right? the common folks they are struggling or with the with the food crisis the cost of living crisis so i look at the normal inflation i, I don't believe in the core inflation bullshit also the common folks are still suffering look at youtube video you search for viewers like how much 200 dollars can buy at walmart or, or target or, or, or whatever you notice that from pre-virus until now right the same amount of 200 dollars right they buy maybe 60 percent of the amount of food only or that means they buy 40 percent less with the same amount because their salary is still the same it's still the same salary then their, their weekly grocery spending is still 200 dollars but they are getting 40 percent less so instead of beef they buy chicken <laughs> Uh, that's why there's no inflation or uh, because they, they lower down the weightage of beef and they increase the weightage of chicken so so there's no inflation so the feds every month they, they change their their formula right? so the real inflation especially the consumer spending on food is actually worse th than what they show you and last month the inflation was bad mostly due to shelter and if this month is bad then it means that renters all this uh is still very sticky uh, uh, medical costs, services, shelter, all this is not coming down. It's, it's only going higher and higher. Yeah, so the estimate is that tomorrow the print will come in at 3.1%. Then yesterday, I also had the special on the REITs. Why is REITs crashing? REITs is crashing <laughs> uh, because that uh, market expects that inflation remains sticky and that the Feds cannot cut rates so aggressively instead of six or seven cuts this year now the market is expecting just maybe three cuts only so interest rates because of the high inflation interest rate could remain higher for longer so that's the problem so tomorrow what will happen so i think three scenario like if it come in at 3.1 that is still a high number then the u.s market might drop one percent if it comes in at uh, 3.2 or worse than estimate the market might come down two or three percent it will be a sell down if it comes in at 3.2 or if it comes in at three then we might have a small green up 0 0.5 uh. i don't expect any rally at all it's, it's more likely to be a sell down but whether it is a small sell down or a huge sell down so uh, it's on the downside for for this in for this print in in february it's not a good number for for sure so if you look at youtube right what are the youtubers saying so i'm from singapore la, so all these three they are singapore youtubers so it started from this article that about the lost decade so chicken covered it and, and summarizes it and share his thoughts then kelvin also shared or oh, beware of the u.s lost decade that now valuations are on the high side or oh, then it, it could be a lost decade of 10 years that mr lu also follow so what is this this is called hurt mentality one person shout oh lost decade lost decade everybody also echo lost decade lost decade lost decade then the, the word becomes bigger and bigger so some youtubers they, they, they say that oh because it's gonna be a lost decade it's wise to diversify by global etf or then maybe some is the ym65 cam or oh, don't take risks oh put your money into cpf oh so uh, good luck to you uh, if you are still supercharging your cpf i'm after not a believer of uh cpf so is it true will it be a lost decade so my, my view is that i'm a contrarian uh. when everyone is shouting something right 
most likely it won't it won't come true lah. It won't come true. Yeah, and for now we see that mostly the hype is on uh crypto and also in AI. So what I think will happen could be that market go even higher. <laughs> I I think that maybe like say the CPI print is bad, drop a bit, but then it still push up higher. Uh, especially Bitcoin and AI, the bubble gets bigger. So as as people move to cash, but there there's one group that moves to cash, but there's one group that keeps uh spe speculating. Or you move to cash, then you see oh still going higher. Then you have people fall more and, and rush back in. Yeah, I think the bubble might might continue to pump more air inside. Uh, and then when it gets too big, example Bitcoin goes to eighty k or one hundred k. Suddenly, the the music ends and the bubble pop. Oh, it's not gonna go sideways. I think it's gonna be a very sharp drop. I think it's gonna be a very sharp drop. It's like that like Bitcoin. They they can pump it to one hundred k. Then when they release it, ah, uh, it can drop eighty percent, another eighty percent to to twenty k, something like that. I think it's gonna be very very freaking volatile. I think it's gonna be a big 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 movement, a big up then a big down. It's more more like something like that. Yeah, I think the music continues to play. Yeah, then because this year is also, I would say the election year, so they don't want to crash the market. So even if now the CPI is bad, right? I think it won't be an immediate crash. It's more like a correction. Correction already. Then people still push 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 it up. There's so much greed. Yeah. Then the bubble come back again, and the bubble is bigger and bigger. So uh, I think the bubble might pop more more towards the year end. I would say yeah, or or the uh, second half of of the year. But when the bubble pops, ah,、uh, a lot of people will be hurt. It will be similar. It could be similar lah to what happened in two one and two two. High growth tech drop eighty percent, then a、uh, crypto drop eighty percent. It feels like a repeat. Or、uh, some AI stocks or、uh, that that are not so fundamentally strong could drop eighty percent. Crypto could could drop eighty percent. Crypto is always like that one. Crypto never goes sideways one. It's either super up or super down. You can think of it as 坐电梯 and 下电梯 means taking the elevator up and taking the elevator down. Or it doesn't move like climbing the stairs. Yeah. So so that that's my my thinking ah. That's my thinking. Yeah. So feel free to ask me anything about crypto. Then the second half I'll talk about uh capital land China trust. Yeah. Welcome all. Welcome all. Okay, so ML Disney still can buy or not lah? I don't know lah. I quite some time never see Disney already. Uh, Disney their their cash cow is still the Disneyland lah. But but then, uh, Disney Plus, uh, that 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 doesn't uh Disney Plus is still loss making. They haven't turned it profitable yet. Yeah, so the big all eyes will be whether they can turn profitable. Disney actually up quite a a lot from the lows already. Yet today is up a lot. Ah, up twenty percent already. It doesn't look cheap anymore. Yeah, I think the boat has left port already. Cannot buy already. Yeah, it was like, so, it was like cheap over here, like the eighty five dollar level. That was very cheap. Yeah, I think below hundred was an easy buy. Ah, now above hundred, I think the boat has left port already. Yeah, so I I don't think Disney is a buy anymore. I don't think it. So U.S. market last year, I was shouting buy for Disney and. PayPal, yeah, P. So 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 I think Disney the the boat has that port. In fact, you want to sell Disney and take profit. I I I would think that way. PayPal, I think the boat still at port. Yeah, PayPal is still still cheap. Whereas Disney, from 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 buy, I think I will turn it to sell call. It did run run up quite a lot already. Yeah, Disney. But you want to continue holding for long term also can lah. But it's more like a turn around play. They have to sell their cable business, then turn their Disney Plus profitable. Then the Disneyland is still a cash cow. That's how I'll think of Disney lah. U.S. market really nothing much to buy already. So now U.S. market is the music chair. I would totally avoid the U.S. market. So like I shared uh yesterday, I believe like let's say if I'm a U.S. heavy portfolio, right? What will I do? I will rebalance though. I will take my profits. In the U.S. market, I'll still maintain some exposure in the U.S. market lah for long term. Then I'll rotate the funds into REITs. I think now is the time to buy REITs at six percent yield at the one thousand level. 
then it's also time to bargain hunt in the Hong Kong market. Hong Kong market, you don't have to buy the Alibaba, JD, Tencent, all these uh, Chinese tech stocks. The dividend stocks are very attractive, like Ping An uh, and the uh, Fortune, which all these, or 8%, 10% dividend yield, 8%, 9% dividend yield. So I think dividend stocks is where you want to park, uh, to be defensive. If you also believe that uh, the bubble is forming, then you are worried that the bubble will pop. So a uh, rotation into defensive blue chip dividend stocks could be a wise play if, if that is your thesis in the stock market. And then if you are more risk taking than in the Hong Kong market, you load up on the Chinese tech. Yeah, so it depends on your strategy. Yeah. But definitely US market, like be it crypto or AI, definitely is a bubble already. Just that I don't know when the, the, the bubble will, will pop. Yeah, so Dominic Teo, DCA at every 10% for JD. Uh, 10% drop or 10% up. Go up already, no need to buy. Lah. Just, just write. Lah. Just write it. Uh, JD, you already bought and, and the boat leave already. Then just let the boat go. Lah. There's so many bargains. Like Singapore market, risk is a bargain. Hong Kong market, the risk is also a, a bargain. Pingan is also a bargain. Yeah, then Baba is also a bargain. A lot of boats still at port. Uh, in the Hong Kong market to bargain hunt. Okay, so Levazer, welcome, welcome. A lot of new names. Oh, Ng Kok Le, Max First Sergeant, Aquarius, oh, Mr. Tokowi. Now gold is very high. Wow, you wear the gold chain, you very sucky, very happy. Yo. Jojo, David Ong, oh. totally Jaden. Watching Master Leong is addictive. My wife complained, I'm listening more to ML than her. Wow, oh, better spend more time with your wife. Happy wife, happy life. Always remember that. Yeah. A rising dragon leave all boat. Hopefully uh, this year. Dragon. Yeah, you are Hara Kesuke. The war is burning money. And they're printing a lot of money. That's why Bitcoin and gold is rallying. Because it's like a, a store of currency. February 13th, there was a flash crash. Uh. One day we cover all time high. What, uh, what, what, what was that? You mean crypto uh, or, or what? Yeah, Pixels Princess drop better. I haven't DCA my biggest position. Uh, now it's not gonna drop. Eh. Now it's uptrend already for Hong Kong market. If you want to buy into the Hong Kong market, don't wait wait for pullback already. You must write, write it already because Hong Kong market is recovery mode already. Don't wait for a 5% drop, then you go in and buy. Eh. It, it, there might not be any pullback. Yeah, if Hong Kong market you want to buy, buy because of the valuations. Yeah. US market is the one you want to buy if there's a pullback, example on like Apple or, or Alphabet. Yeah. Okay, so if call is 0 0.4 crash, if call is 0 0.5 plunge, uh, <laughs> yeah, call inflation, we look at the numbers, uh, expectation is what, 0 0.3, uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, wow, that will be super bad. But there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of fear. I think we might see a, a pullback tomorrow for the US market. Chu Kat Yong, if tomorrow S&P sell down, what is the likely impact on China and Hong Kong? So no impact. Uh. Totally is the di divergence. Uh. You notice that US market is, is coming down, but Hong Kong market is going up. Previously, it's the reverse. Ma. US market keep going up over the past three years, but Hong Kong market keep going down. So I think so. They have diver there was a divergence. So now it's converged already. Yeah, so don't be surprised. Hong Kong market keep going up because of low interest rate and so much hot money. Uh, in, in the mainland and the locals have so much saving locals one they want the for the china mainlanders once they see that the stock market is going up they might deploy their cash into the stock market then the stock market will go even further up because in the past right there was a lot of U, u.s money in the china market but the u.s market uh, u.s dollars right the u.s investor have already left the china and hong kong market already so whatever happens in the u.s market don't affect the China market that much anymore. Yeah. So uh, the, both of them they are independent. Uh, they, I, I will say they are less related already. So totally Jaden. Yeah, good to have you guys over here. Buy grab at lower price. So you bought at 3.15. Uh. Oh, I will buy at $3, uh, but 3.15 not much difference. Uh, up to you all. Uh. If the CPI uh, is high, then uh, risk will drop also. Because the fear of higher for longer. But drop then is good, ma. Drop then you can bargain hunt into the risk. Uh. I think risk is where you want to be bargain hunting. 
US market nothing to bargain hunt really. I think risk is where to bargain hunt. Cash 11, good evening. What OT then come lah. Or Jeff Liu, Singapore market how? Singapore market is risk and bank in index lah. Uh, the higher risk, higher for longer is good for the banks but bad for the risk. So neutral lah for the Singapore market. But people might just sell down lah because that there's fear lah. Then the dividend stocks might be sold down. Then you want to bargain hard on the risk. Also, LVNC, thank you, thank you, thank you for your type. Um. JD touched $100.40 this morning. Yeah, JD and SE, both very strong. Both both boats are uh, leaving port ready. Singapore market, short term, there will be volatility. But if you buy the REITs now, especially the blue chip REITs, you can hold for 2-3 years. Jia, sure make money. La. Yeah, that, that's the thinking. GG, Kelvin Learn investing has no substance. <laughs> He his this video although it's a eleven minute video he throw a lot of charts, but every chart he talk ten second only. Oh this chart you see the trend is going up. Oh then it's up like that then next chart already, totally no no analysis no critical thinking at all. Uh, so no meaning nah. It's just uh, throwing a lot of chart only. Uh, it, it, the the thing is that whether a person right understand or not is that let's say he throw you one chart he talk for five minute. Then you come to a conclusion, or then you 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 learn something. You feel that you learn something. His video you watch eleven minutes, he show you twenty thirty different chart, but you feel that you learn nothing. <laughs> that, that that's that's the thing. Yeah, even to to criticize a bit, huh? Uh, the even the chicken and Mister Lu also. Sometimes you watch their ten minute video, you realize that Indian what to do. Example, Mister Lu did the video on Tesla. Then he you watch the video, you realize that he knows nothing about Tesla. He thought nothing about Tesla valuation, nothing about Tesla business. So in the end, should you sell Tesla or should you hold on to Tesla? Also no conclusion. So a lot of times, right, or be it like uh, Singaporean YouTubers, right, the thing I criticize is that in the end, there's no analysis and there's no conclusion. Then, then it's a waste of your 10 minutes. So, so uh, uh, yeah, so that's how I will criticize them. Uh. Master is Thanos, Thanos, yeah. So I always badmouth other SG YouTubers. So I'm the bad guy of the SG Finance YouTube scene. Yeah. So okay. Ani Goro, actually Bitcoin can still go up because USA print a lot of money. Yes. So 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 that that is the the thinking that US dollar becoming toilet paper. That's why everybody rush to buy gold and everybody rush to buy Bitcoin. So that's one school of thought lah, and that's why the prices are going up. But it's up a lot already. So so. I don't recommend chasing, so you all be careful. Yeah. So yeah, crypto is casino. Yeah. So now oh, the stakes is getting higher and higher. Oi, oi! If Trump wins U.S. election, it will be bad for Hong Kong China stocks. I don't think so. Eh? Trump, although he say that the sixty percent tariff, right? It's just that both Trump and Biden they are bashing China to win the votes. But I think Trump is a better. I prefer Trump to win. I think Trump is better for China because Trump is a businessman. If he sees that the US economy is weak, he will understand that it's not logical to fight with China, but rather to cooperate with China to save themselves. Uh, example, China is the number one or number two largest holder of US treasury. So China and Japan, they export the most to US, they hold the most US debt. So you don't want China and Japan to dump all your, your US dollar debt or, and crash the US dollar, am I right? So you will seek to cooperate with them rather to fight with them. So I think Donald Trump has the uh, emotional intelligence to cooperate with China. Whereas Biden is stupid one, uh, Biden is just a puppet. Uh. All the, the blue chip companies, the big tech companies donate to him and he's just and they just pull the strings to, to control Biden. So Biden is, is pro-US company. And it's bad for the common folks. Uh. What Biden doing is very bad for, for the common folks. Yeah. So I prefer Trump to win in that sense. In that sense uh. Yeah. Empty pounds. Welcome, welcome. Falling star overhead. Master, between five Tiger General and Ping An, which do you think is a better buy? It's different. Uh. It's different. Both of them is a dividend stock, but the, the risk profile is different. The five Tiger General is safer. Uh. Let's say your profile is. 50, 60 years old, you, you want dividend uh, for retirement, then you go for the five tiger general, don't go for ping an. Because ping an is 
in the Hong Kong market is very volatile. Then for the five target general, like I mentioned, ma, your, your downside is only five to 10%. It's very hard to lose big money buying REITs now because they are at the record lows already. You look at the chart. So your downside is very limited. Whereas Ping An, like I say, la, geopolitical risk, then suddenly there's a news that they have to buy and save the country garden, then it might drop 20, 30%. So Ping An is higher risk, higher return. Ping An, you get 8% dividend. The currently is traded at 0 0.7 times book value. It can generate 20% return on equity. So I think the fair value is at least 1.5 times book value. So similar to DBS, DBS, I think, uh, it can generate DBS the return on equity just fifteen percent only. Yet it can go to one point five times book value. Yeah. So if if Ping An was a Singapore insurance bank company, Ping An easily would be worth seventy five to hundred dollar because the the book value is fifty dollar. Yeah. So Ping An is dividends plus a recovery play law. Whereas REITs is purely for dividend. So it depends on your profile. If you are younger, let's say in your 20s, 30s or 40s, then Ping An is a better play. Yeah, if you are older, then you want dividend, then REITs is the play. Yeah, so let me go into REITs. Uh. Oh, you all start to ask me REITs, right? So, Capital Land, China Trust. Oh, Master keep getting question every time people ask me this. So, one shot I cover. Oh, don't ask me again already. Oh, so, going forward, I'll cover more on the Hong Kong market. Because Hong Kong market, a lot of opportunities. Singapore market, REITs. Once in a while, I, I might do a REIT special, la, but, but REITs is not my main coverage. La. My main coverage is still Hong Kong market and a bit of US market. Now, basically, I bullish on Hong Kong, I'm bearish on US. That, that's my general view. So I'm, that's against uh, most YouTubers. Uh, the herd, uh, they, they, they are not in buying into the Hong Kong market for sure. La. So I'm a contrarian to buy in the Hong Kong market because it's so cheap. So Capital Land, China Trust, you look at the five-year chart. Well, it was as high as that $1.50. So now it's dropped by half already over the past five years, down 50%. So is this a value buy? Is it undervalued? So that's where we want to investigate. So what assets is, is helped by the CLCT? Also, CLCT, right, mostly is shopping more asset. And all their assets is in China. China, oh, yeah. So the land of CCP. So it's almost three quarter is in shopping more. Then one quarter is in like business park logistics. So I think it's more towards industrial, industrial exposure. One quarter industrial exposure, three quarter shopping mall asset. And it's in the tier one city, like the Beijing like that. So you can see like their retail portfolio. They have 10 shopping mall uh, and four of them is in Beijing, uh, tier one city. Then Changsha, uh, Guangzhou is the coastal area. It's also tier one. Then you, as you move inland into Haaping, Chengdu, this, this is the tier 2 city, tier 1 and tier 2 cities. So I will consider their assets to be high quality one. When you go to China shopping, you will see that this mall, they have the capital land uh, logo outside them. So usually they are near MRT and they are very densely populated. So they are actually high quality shopping mall assets and it's proven by their occupancy rate. So you can see that in 2-0, there was the virus. So 2-1 and 2-2 was very strict lockdown. So you look at the end of 2-2, occupancy rate was very bad, below 95%. So 5% is empty. Then in 2-3, we had the reopening. Oh, no, no, oh, no more lockdowns really. People are free to go out. So people go to the physical shopping mall to eat the high tilao hot pot to shop at the mini Soho or, or whatever, or people spend more time in the shopping mall. So you see that overall occupancy rate, or just within the, the, the past four or five quarters from below 95%, now is 98.2%. So that's very healthy. That's very good. Yeah, so their core asset, the 75% of retail shopping mall is doing very well. So fundamentally, I see nothing wrong with the this read. That's fundamentally, nothing wrong with their core asset but like i say their secondary exposure into the industrial side is very bad so like i share with you the data consumer spending is coming back but manufacturing is very slow and, and sideways and certain areas of manufacturing especially those related to property is very bad so for their business part right 
or in Hangzhou, Suzhou, Xi'an, there are five business parks. It's not doing well. Or you can see that the occupancy rate is at 91%. So certain assets is super underperforming. Like you see this Hangzhou Science Technology Park uh, Phase 1. Occupancy rate is 70 over percent. So that's very bad. So certain pockets of their business park is not doing well. Because the business park right, is in different area. Different cities, they specialize in different things. So because this is an overseas asset, that's why I don't like to invest in overseas assets. It's a Singapore asset. I will go down to the industrial park to take a look myself. But these assets, they're overseas. So the industrial park must ask, what are they specializing? Like the C-City, is it specialized? Example, I know Shanghai is specialized in EV car, in battery. Hangzhou is actually, uh, by right, it should be a tech, tech area also. The Alibaba is at Hangzhou, am I right? So it should be also tech focused. So is it EV focus? Is it tech focus? Is it green energy focus? Or is it a dinosaur uh, industry like furniture, electronics? So every city they have their own focus one right, because of the chain supply. Example, there, there will be certain cities uh, like the Guangzhou like that uh, is the city of Nike, Adidas. The whole town is make the sports shoes one. Right? All, all the parts, ingredients, raw materials to make. So certain cities, they specialize in different products that they manufacture and export. So without the on the ground know-how, right? You, you don't know why the asset is performing, why the asset is underperforming. So I don't know why this asset is underperforming. I don't have the, the on the ground knowledge. So it seems that certain pockets, maybe that is related to property or low-end manufacturing, is not doing well. That's why the occupancy rate is weak at 91%. Definitely that is very bad. Uh. You want at least uh, 95%. Then look at the logistics park. Oh, logistics park, uh, they, they are heavy on Shanghai. Then the rest is, is quite quite inland like that. Oh, Wuhan, Chengdu. Oh, it's big city but, but it's more inland. So they own four logistics park. Then this one also not doing well. Oh, you see the occupancy rate, 82%. That is super, super bad. And you can notice that uh, it's dragged by two major assets. Uh, turn to occupancy rate drop so much. 88% drop to 67%. So I also don't know what is happening. The management never give details. Shanghai, 98% drop to 60%. So I have no insider knowledge. I don't know what is happening uh, on the ground. Like Shanghai, I thought it, it, it should be doing very well because it's like the land of EV. You need uh, all this transportation, once they manufacture the EV, you need to transport it to the port or this. So it surprises me. So it could be like maybe an individual tendon suddenly uh, go bankrupt. It could be like example, an EV company suddenly go bankrupt. Then, then you, you suddenly lose one tendon. That's why suddenly your occupancy rate from 98.6% drop to 60%. Yeah, so this isn't a super deep dive. Uh. I never spend a lot of time to investigate. So I, I just browsing through only to explain to you all. Yeah, so if this was a super deep dive, I, I'm given like a few weeks to investigate. Then all these questions, right, I will really dig very deep uh, and investigate and, and see what the city, what the tendon, everything is about. So I don't have the extra knowledge. So basically, as a whole, right, for C CLCT, right, is that their shopping mall portfolio is doing very well. But their one quarter, the industrial related uh, assets, is very underperforming that is dragging it down well that's why the stock price is being sold down so aggressively and because the sentiments on china is also very bad then lastly right is the forex issue so you look at as somebody when you buy clcd is listed in singapore so you're expected to collect your dpu in sing dollar but the thing is that the rentals that they generate is in chinese yuan so your tendon is, is main lenders that pay you in Chinese yuan. You have to convert the Chinese yuan into Sing dollar to become your dividend. That's why I, I always emphasize invest in your own country, your own currency. So you don't have forex risk or forex exchange risk. So the forex over the past two years is against you. So this is a five year chart. So now it's 2024. In 2022, the Chinese yuan against the Sing dollar. One Sing dollar can exchange. 4.6 Chinese yuan. Oh, but now one Sing dollar can exchange 5.4 Chinese yuan. So in the past two years, the forex has been negative 15% for you. 
So you never do anything based on forex, you lose 15%. Even you buy a risk-free government Chinese bond, you will lose 15%. Why? Because of US raising the interest rate. So a lot of the money, right, the capital flow out of China and go into US dollar. Or they park in US, they get 5.2%, 5.25% risk-free. Whereas Ch Chinese Yuan, they keep doing the lowering of interest rate, quantitative easing, so Chinese yuan becomes unattractive. People sell off the Chinese yuan, sell off, and, and they move uh, to the US dollar. That's why Chinese yuan has been very weak, and it peaked at about uh, one one US dollar against seven point three uh, Chinese yuan. So Sing dollar, the currency, right, is a basket of foreign currency, and we are heavy on uh, Western currency such as US dollar and Euro. So so. Although our basket inside also got Chinese yuan, but we are more heavy on the Western uh, currency. That's why US dollar is strong against the Chinese yuan. So you collect in Chinese yuan, you, you, you suffer uh, the forex losses. So that's why I explain all this. So when you look at the financial numbers, then it makes sense. Also, some YouTubers, right, they just throw, throw the first thing they do, they throw you this chart. Then they say, oh, CLCT sucks. Oh no, DPU dropped 10%, cannot make it, Sampan Rui, sell, get out, China asset, lousy, but they never do critical thinking. That's why you look at YouTubers, not that I like to criticize it, them, huh? like I mentioned just now, Kelvin Learn investing, Chicken or Mr. Lu. Honestly, do they do this kind of analysis like what I do before they show you the numbers? No, they just show you the numbers, oh, it's down 10%, it's no good, it's lousy, you should sell, you should get out, or it's up 10%. Or DPU earnings is up 10%. Bye, bye, bye. It will go higher. That one is no analysis. They just show you a chart. It's going up. It's up 10%. Then you should buy because it's going up. So this is what I call analysis. So once you analyze, then the numbers will make sense. If you don't understand the macro environment, you don't understand the business fundamentals, then you are unable to see the truth, how to interpret the numbers. So DPU is down 10% year over year so is it right to say that clct is lousy it's fundamentally unsound the answer is no like i show you all, retail is doing well occupancy rate increased from 94 percent to 98 percent or there's an improvement due to the reopening so the shopping malls are doing very well just that the industrial assets is not doing well but industrial assets is a small piece it's just 24 percent of their portfolio so the majority of portfolio is doing well but the DPU you get 10% less is mostly due to Forex. It's due to Forex issue. Because your Chinese Yuan is so weak, then you must pay out the DPU in Sing dollar. So the reverse will happen. So I believe DPU has bottomed already. So like I'm sure your consumer spending is increasing. Am I right? So the rental income in terms of Chinese Yuan for 2024 should be higher. The shopping malls will see better occupancy rate. And they can charge a higher rental so so that, that that part should improve then the one quarter part the industrial part should stabilize as manufacturing uh, is now stabilizing so as a whole should stabilize so th then your dpu right should go up because your forex have should already bottom already once the feds start to cut rates then us dollar will weaken chinese yuan will strengthen so the two scenario for 2024 is your DPU will either go flat or your DPU will either go higher. So the worst should be over in terms of DPU for CLCT. And this is what I call analysis. Uh, so the DPU now is 9.2%. So that is a very good dividend yield. So to me, it's an easy buy. Bao jia. <laughs> so this is bao jia. Oh, this is a strong blue chip sponsor. But the problem is it doesn't have blue chip status it does not have blue chip status so the nav is one dollar and 18 cents so based on the current 73 cents it's trading at almost 40 percent discount to book value so it's a bit similar to fortune reads and link reads clct fortune land and link reads i'll put them under the same category is the hong kong china asset uninvestable but like i mentioned most likely for this hong kong and china assets most likely they are bottoming or have bottom already so this the opportunity that we want to bargain high so hong kong land fortune reads link reads and now clct 
So this is where I feel that Hong Kong and China assets is the time to bargain hard. Oh, but if you think China is uninvestable, then you avoid. But to me, I like to be greedy when others are fearful. So the last question is looking at their borrowing costs. So one thing I don't like, the, the red flag. Oh, so no risk is perfect. There are some points that are good, some points are no good. The gearing is on the high side. So at the end of the year, December, right, gearing is 41.5%. So it's a bit high. I prefer the gearing to be at around 40%. So this will, will press down their DPU because of the higher gearing. So their borrowing cost is at about 3.57%. Uh, so it's about there. Uh, it's about blue chip borrowing cost because their parent company is uh, capital land. So it's more like a, a mid cap counter. So by right, their borrowing cost should be a bit higher because some of their borrowing cost is in RMB, which is a lower interest rate. 72% is in Sing dollar, or which is based on our Sora. So I believe the interest rate borrowing cost should peak already. Uh, should peak already. So I don't think uh, it should affect. In fact, the borrowing cost should go down in 2024. Once the Fed start to cut rate, even for their Chinese loan, the China Central Bank is poised to cut rate. So this year is the year of rate cut. Yeah, so most likely their borrowing cost uh, has peaked already. Maybe the, the first uh, quarter or, or two, it will jump up a bit to 3.6. Then after that, subsequently, it should come down already. Yeah, so, so I'm not worried uh, about the borrowing cost. The main issue is still Forex. Yeah, because of the weak Chinese Yuan, your DPU crashed 10%. So it should stabilize or, or improve this year already. Yeah, so in the end, their debt portfolio is very well staggered. Then for 2024, about 6.7% of their debt uh, is to renew. They already renew part of it already. So very little left to renew. They already renew uh, 100 million already. So just left a bit only, like another 131 million. They renew half of it already. So this renewal uh, well, shouldn't be impactful. Lah. Just a day, so their borrowing cost shouldn't change much. Just six point seven percent renewal, so about there, lor. So their borrowing cost maybe three point six percent. I think that that's that's not very difficult. So so should be okay. Yeah. So overall, I say this is an easy buy. But does does it mean you must buy sure buy, bao jia? The answer is no. So if you want to build a REIT portfolio, right, you must have a base. So the base, if you don't know how to stock pick, like I mentioned yesterday, you buy CFA. You buy the REIT ETF. That's the most solid one. It's like building a castle, ma. Your base is like building a house. Your base must be solid, ma. Can you imagine you build a house, right? Or you build a house, example, it's three-story house. You have your own landed property. Then you have a lot of material. You have good material, lousy material. Will you use the lousiest material to build your base? Or will you use the best material to build your, head, your base? Of course, the best, right? So when you build a house, you want to build the base with blue chip. So your the base of your house, the first floor, you must use CFA, blue chip ETF, or you use the five tiger general, you five blue chip bit as the first floor of your house, so that your house even got storm, rain, or hurricane, the house will not collapse. Imagine your house, the first floor, you use sampan reeds to build the base. Am I right? Your your first hundred thousand, you go and buy what you buy, uh, Kepa Oak Pacific reed lah, you buy Lipo Mall, you buy Sabana reed lah. You buy the manual life read, huh? then you use that to form your base. That's stupid, right? Obviously, right? But people, there are a lot of people who don't have this common sense. They, they just started investing and they work some time reads because they want to chase 10% dividend yield. But you just think of the house methodology, you know that is a very stupid idea. But that's how people build their house. They build the first story using some time reads. Then they are doomed to fail already. Yeah, so it's so simple. Just think of the house. First of all, you build blue chip reads. Then, second floor, you can be a bit more aggressive. Or you can use lousier material, go for a wider space, be a bit greedy. So only when you have acquired the five Tiger General REITs, right? Then you want to buy a bit of a higher U REITs, like the CLCT. That's how you, you, you should strategize. Example, you have 100K to invest in REITs. Then your first 100K, you buy the five Tiger General. Then subsequently, every month, you're going to put in 2000 to DCA, then your additional funds that you coming in every month, you can buy uh, the higher risk REITs, uh, like Fortune REITs, 9.5% dividend yield, uh, CLCT, 9.2% dividend yield, 
uh, uh, 9.5% or 9.2% dividend yield. Yeah. So that's how to build your portfolio, read portfolio. Yeah, so that's all my sharing. I hope is useful for, for you all. So that's all my sharing for tonight. And yes, like, it's an easy buy, like, but it should not. Like I mentioned, uh, the, the dividend yield 9.2%. Uh, forty percent discount the book value easy buy because it's a China read people dislike it think that it's uninvestable, but it should not form the base of your portfolio, or it should not form the first floor. It's either your second or, or third floor of your house. As simple as that. Oh, welcome, welcome. Wow, wow. I see you are special. Ah, what ah, what ah, what ah. Wow, Min Chin. Thank you, thank you. What ah. Yeah, special thanks to. Wow, today a lot of special Alvin C. Thank you for your type and go game. Thanks for your Milo Ping. Crypto to the moon. Crypto are our crypto billionaire already. King and king of crypto. Go Kim. Wow, super happy for you. Min Chin. Wow, thanks for your Mala hot pot. Baba go. Yeah. Baba still at port. Uh, $72 level. Hopefully, Baba can, can start to uh, leave port already. SE and JD leave port already. Now is uh don't know when uh, the, the Baba and Ping An can leave port. Yeah, so waiting for more of you all to, to board the the Ping An and the Ping An boat uh, and the Baba boat. Ping An and Baba still still at port. Uh, waiting to go. Sean Ho, welcome, welcome. Oh Chong Pui, welcome. AC, how about Tracker Fund? Tracker Fund is the Hansen Index, oh, it's still very cheap. But Hansen Index is like PE7 or what? Hansen Index inside got banks and uh like the hsbc la stand chart la china big four banks la then there's also tech companies like alibaba tencent meituan there's also property companies like the chong kong uh hachison group la, uh yeah lo, so wampo all this la. so it's banks uh properties consumer stocks la, like high di lao la li ning la. then there's tech stocks like everything so H hansen index is very diversified uh, so you can if you are new then okay uh, you can, can buy wow I see another special wow AED uh, AED is, is what, what currency uh, AED uh, thank you D Dino Ho wow I like your name eh. what wow, king of dinosaur Dino Ho AED AED currency is from what country what country are you from wow it's from Saudi Arabia wow okay thank you thank you Saudi Arabia wow wow the, the first time I received this currency Oh, United Emirates, uh, D D D Ram. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope you are doing well. I see the news right that Saudi uh Arabia, you are investing heavily into China. Yeah, so Middle East or oh, is is bullish on China. So I hope that my, my coverage on China is useful for you all la. Wow, master international already. My audience ah, not only Australia, Canada. US, uh, South Africa, uh. wow, Middle East also have audience already, master international star already. Yeah, so Middle East actually the sovereign wealth fund, like uh, Saudi A A Arabia, la, Abu Dhabi, la, Qatar, la. they are all investing into China. Why? Or it's also the same thing. Actually, it, it comes back to, to here already. Why? Because the US dollar is becoming toilet paper. So what happened uh, is all these uh, Middle East countries, right, they're afraid that U.S. will do the same thing to them as what they did to Russia. Russia invade Ukraine, then they ban Russia from from accessing the U.S. dollar to the SWIFT system, and they seize all the uh, the, the the Russia U.S. dollar reserve, all in, that is in U.S. dollar. So the the Middle East countries, right? They don't want to hold so much U.S. dollar. They want to diversify. So even the Middle East countries, they are also buying gold. But a better way is because they actually sell a lot of their oil to China and they receive Chinese Yuan. So Chinese Yuan, how to use? They use the Chinese Yuan to invest and hold stakes in China companies. And they also get the technology know-how. Like we saw, the, I think Abu Dhabi, uh, they, they invest into NIO, NIO which is uh, under Tencent. Or actually, the, is the major shareholder. They own a 20% stake. So they get the technology know-how into EV. So it's a good exchange right? because Middle East, there's oil, there's energy. Then China, there's technology. So Middle East and China is a good partner. And they have a common enemy, which is the USA, land of freedom. Yeah, so thanks thanks for support. Thanks for support. Okay. Uh, Jeff Liu, try to buy uh, FCT, not done. Lah. Slowly, lah. the price come down. Then, then you all buy. Lah. Yeah. Don't wait. Yeah. 
I keep telling master to tell you, don't wait for the lowest price. We are not I quadrant. Yeah, nobody knows when is the lowest. Uh. If, if cheap, then can try to bargain hunt. Aquarius in Hong Kong can have a look at ETF 3070. Or, or ETF, I'm not really into ETF. I, I, I'm actually more of a stock picker, to be honest. 307, uh, okay, Hong Kong, Yahoo Finance. Is this the high yield dividend ETF? Oh, Ping An China CSI Hong Kong dividend. CSI is the Shanghai index, or uh, the Shanghai Composite index. So you pick from there. Don't have the tech stocks or this one. It's all the dinosaur stocks. It's like banks or this. Or oh, top two holding Sinook uh, bank is the bank and, and energy stocks. Uh, I think it's the bank and energy stocks. Uh, I don't recommend buying this kind of dividend ETF uh, because I, I'm not familiar with their their holdings inside. Yeah, the the U looks quite hard. If you want to buy right, let's say for dividend right, buy this one, three one four three Bank ETF Hong Kong. Yeah, so it's this one, China AMC Hong Kong Bank ETF. Yeah, so this is also about the six percent dividend U. So inside here right, is all the blue chip banks, oh, which is like HSBC, uh, C CCB, oh, not vulgarity, huh? BOC, ICBC, oh. so big six banks are ah. then. Uh, HSBC and Standard they actually have like Europe and Asia, but mostly they are focused in the Asia. So you have Asia and, and China exposure. Then six percent U is very high. So because when you get high U dividend right in the China market right, it usually come from a few sector. One is banking and finance. Another is energy. I don't recommend having energy exposure. Why? Because energy is very cyclical very cyclical like now they give you high dividend but oil prices crash then they will cut dividend so i don't recommend that you get dividend from uh energy companies like sinook la china petrol all these are uh, uh, uh the, the dividend might be inconsistent that, that's the problem yeah you see the oil prices fluctuate a lot so so that's that's that, that's the problem but like i said um, example like example C sinook is the big, biggest oil company uh in china so you can look at the dividend history. I also never researched before. So do they have a good dividend track record? You see, their dividend is can fluctuate a bit one. It's not consistent. Am I right? You look at so it's like pay 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 suddenly, or that there's the lockdown, there's a recession, then the dividend cut, then recovery, then pay. So the, your high yield ETF, right? Try not to buy high yield ETF that has energy companies inside, because the industry itself, like Sinook and China Petrol. Uh, it's cyclical in nature uh, so you can do that china petrol uh dividend history dividend history yeah so so don't go for those high yield etf the high yield etf the U looks high is because uh year over year or oh, it's called sinopec uh. oh not not china petroleum i also don't know then you can see example uh, this is the Sinopec, uh, also is the is the China uh, blue chip energy company. You see the dividend, uh, very high, then drop, drop, then go up again, then drop, drop. So, is the the dividend is cyclical in nature. Yeah. So the other time someone introduced example like Hong Kong high high U uh, ETF. Example the Global X, uh, Hang Seng high U. So I don't recommend buying this kind of ETF. It's three one one zero. So it's a high dividend U ETF. But do you really understand? What is the holdings inside? So inside this holding, right, you, you will see that there's Sinook or there's the China Petro. Then, uh, example, we get this uh, China Petro 857, ticker code 85U. And you will notice that their dividend, right, is not consistent. That, that's the problem. Or a lot, you see, uh, Senhua Energy. A lot is energy company and banks. You want the bank to pay you dividend. You don't want energy. You don't want dividend from energy company. Example Petro China ticker code eight five seven Hong Kong then your dividend history so you look at their dividend history then you see is it consistent or not oh so this one you see is a bit cyclical or oh, it it come down it drop in one night then it go up go up go up and and now drop drop again yeah uh, so so uh that that's the problem is the dividend is cyclical in nature so I don't recommend to buy any of the high yield ETF you want a uh, high dividend you buy the china bank etf uh, is wiser then if you don't want dividend you want growth then you go for hansen tech etf 
ticker code 3067. If you want a mix between growth and dividend, then you buy the Hansen Index. So the Hansen Index uh, is 2800, the tracker fund uh, ETF. So the dividend you I think in there's at least 4%, I think now. What's the dividend? Now 4% dividend. So you want a mix between uh, capital gains and dividend, then you get the Hansen Index. You want capital gains growth, you go for Hansen Tech 3067. You want dividend, then you go for 3143, uh, Finance Bank ETF. Clement, uh, ML can still look at SE. SE book gone already. Huh? Uh, it, uh, the book gone, don't chase that. Or it's an uptrend, then technically it, it has a golden cross. Huh? So it should continue to trend up. But the risk is there. Huh? You go in, then there's bad news. Suddenly, tick, boss, there, there's always a risk. Uh, example, TikTok, uh, Tokyo Media, this kind of corporate action. Then the Indonesia competition intensify, and suddenly the price drop 10 20 percent. So the risk reward is not as attractive already if you go in at the $60 level. So I don't recommend chasing SE. Uh. You have you have it hold and, and write the, the growth story. If you miss the boat, go for other boat. Uh, there's so many boats like Singapore market, Hong Kong market. So many stocks are undervalued. Why you want to force yourself to buy SE? You must learn how to let it go. Though. A lot of people they miss the boat. I say, ayah, master, why I never buy SE? Ayah, master, why I never buy JD? The boat will come back or not? Boat come back can buy or not? My answer is that oh, you don't keep thinking about the boat come back and you don't think about chasing. If it's gone, then it's gone already. Then then you look for other things to bought. Yeah, there's so many things to bought. Ping An, Alibaba, uh, then Reeds. Uh, they are all still at port. Yeah, don't 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 chase. Yeah. Yeah, so Thanos mode, yeah, master Thanos SG YouTubers, yeah, long time never Thanos already, so so today Thanos a bit, yeah. Josh Tan say don't buy DBS now, is it? Yeah, Josh Tan actually I agree with him, should not buy DBS because, uh, when the Fed start to cut rates this year, right, then the net interest margin for DBS will compress, then their earnings is poised to drop maybe five to ten percent this year, so a lot of people don't realize that. So the numbers for DBS will be bad this year. So DBS is up a lot already. Don't don't, don't chase that. Uh. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Okay. Master a bit tired. I, I skip some comments. I, I see any questions. Okay. Clash 11. In China, everyone stay home and order JD Tao Pao Ping Toto. Yeah. Everybody order the delivery. So shopping mall is quite different. Uh. It's no longer uh, retail already. Shopping mall is like experience or like food, service, th those kind of things already. Okay. Ivy Lim, I'm waiting for entry to SE. Uh. Ivy Lim, you want to bought back SE? Uh. If pull back, then bought. Uh. Don't chase. Uh. Don't chase. Uh. If you got pull back, then be, be decisive to bought. Uh. Don't, don't, don't chase. Uh. SE, to be honest, the, the book already leave port lah. I don't want ask if I want to be a bad guy I ask you all buy 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 as if push me up lah. but but I, I I I don't do that lah. I don't ask people to uh, follow blindly and push my stock up lah. Uh, it, it, the boat leave port lah. I tell you really leave port lah. don't chase lah. don't chase yeah GIC is the ultimate reverse indicator <laughs> yeah they look out on Evergrande bonds ah GG ah uh, I don't dare to do the CPS special lah. Our CPF money is invested by GIC and the market. Uh, the FTX, uh, they lose money. La. China Evergrande, uh, they lose money. Uh, I, uh, but I cannot do a special to, uh, to Thanos, our, our the market and GIC. Thanos, our CPF. AU, AU, I was asking about it. Yeah, you were one of them that asked it. So, so that, that's why I, I, I cover it. So I hope you all like my coverage. Uh. Oh, wow, BTC, your Chinese so good. Uh. Guangzhou, uh, 实在杭州, uh, wow, eat at the Guangzhou, then die at the Hangzhou. Uh, like Got this kind of saying one. Uh. Yeah, eat kick. Uh, I bought house repair tools from Taobao. Mostly is from Hangzhou. Uh, oh. So I think it's, Hangzhou is related to the property industry. Uh. That's why the Hangzhou, the, 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 in, the industrial rents is, is not doing well. That's why you must understand. Which city is good is doing what? I don't have the the underground know how. I am still learning about the China e economy. Yeah, I need to keep widening my, my circle of competence and knowledge in the China market. Because that's where I feel that in the next ten years we can make a lot of money. 
It's in the channel. Right, right hand time, master black blood. Uh, master no blood already. Master no blood one. Master is a uh, snake. Master is undead. Sorry, master is undead. Master is Thanos. <laughs> in case you all don't know, it's Thanos. Ah, uh, Thanos. Thanos. I'm Thanos. Master is Thanos. Thanos no blood one. Thanos is un undead. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Wang Chong understand China more is doing very bad because of unemployment. Not really leh. Actually, you look at the retail is doing well leh. Like the like the physical shop that sell gold, gold jewelry is record. Then people are spending at the physical shop like Miniso, revenue and earnings growth. Ah, so physical shop and Hai Di Lao is also uh the numbers not bad uh due to the reopening. Uh, the high unemployment right is actually in the youth. The youth they don't want to work in the factory. Because everyone is degree holder, everyone want the office job, everyone want to work in Alibaba and Tencent. Those that cannot get the office job right, they choose to be full-time children. So I believe the youth unemployment can be as high as 40%. So the unemployment mainly is on the youth. They, they rather stay at home than to take a $3,000 uh, RMB uh, factory job. They want the $5,000, $10,000 uh, tech job. They don't want the $3,000 factory job. That's why the unemployment is high. And it's mostly very concentrated in the youth. And they stay at home what they do. Then they just make short form video. Lor. They make the towing video. Everybody want to be influencer. So it's the younger generation. The thinking is very different already. Lah. Yeah, totally Jaden. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for your compliment. Net 997798. China CPI growth. Lah. Hopefully the worst is over. Lah. That we are out of uh, deflation already. Yeah, so Min Chin. Thanks, thanks again. Yeah. Max Garmin, Master, can you help to explain why? Uh, what thing? You must type a full question. Andrew Tang, Master, can you comment on this Hong Kong stock? Oh, I, I don't know that. Not, not everything I know. Uh, I'm still learning about the Hong Kong market. Uh, but that's where I, I find opportunities. Uh. Oil company. Uh. Oh, this one I really don't know. Uh. I, I don't know. Uh. Because Hong Kong market, there are thousands of companies. I don't know all of them. But it's quite huge. Uh, 83 billion uh, market cap. Yeah, so I don't know. Is this an oil company? Or oh, I, I don't know. I don't know this company. Yeah, Hong Kong market, I'm still learning. Nah. But I, I start from the blue chip stocks. Nah. That's why I, I'll slowly cover the, the large cap blue chip. Yeah. Sampan REITs. Nah. Sampan REITs is those uh, small cap REITs that, that are very poorly managed. I call it Sampan REITs. Or for those who don't know my non Asia video, Sampan is actually a boat. Sampan is like the, the lousy boat. Ah, this is Sampan. So this means this means uh it's very when the storm come right your, your boat will sink. That's some pine reeds that cannot withstand the, the high interest rate. Whereas blue chip reed is like a cruise like that. Like a cruiser, a cruiser, is like cruiser. Or uh, in indestructible. Yeah. So blue chip reeds, even the storm come right, yeah, it will not sink. Some pine reeds is the small cap lousy reeds that will sink. Yeah, so avoid the some pine reeds in the high interest rate uh, environment. Jeff do K Reed is the cheapest. Uh. K Reed and Suntec Reed is the is the cheapest. People don't don't like their Australia exposure and office reads. They don't like also. Uh, yes, the CFA fund got a portion is the India exposure. But the embassy part is like uh is the India uh, so called blue chip read also. Uh. Because CFA you want international or, or say you want Asia diversification. You buy ETF, you want diversification ma. So they have a bit is the link reads, which is the China Hong Kong asset. Then the embassy park is the India asset. So mostly it's Singapore asset. So you are diversified across Asia. Also, Jared or asked me about the read. What read you want? What is this? M four four U read. What what is this? Uh, Maple Logistic uh, is a blue chip read though, but I don't like industrial asset uh. The lifespan is only thirty years. I have a preference for commercial reads. Uh. Jasper Lim, JD and SE uh, left port. Uh, but still cheap. Uh. Oh, you are so bullish. Uh. I think SE fair value, I would say 80, 80 to $100 uh, to be honest. But it can compound its, its, its revenue at uh, uh, eight, uh, let's say 18% annually. So that's long term. That's where they can grow. Then JD, uh, US dollar now is what? $25. Uh. I would say the fair value is at least 50. Oh, so I think you are very optimistic. Huh? 
I'm more conservative in my valuation. So D no oh oh thank you thank you very much oh thank you thank you. So Master Yong, if you can only invest three out of your five Tiger General, which one will I choose? Ah, I will choose the shopping mall one. No, I'll choose CICT, MPACT, and FCT. Shopping mall is easy to understand. Ah, you weekend go to the shopping mall, you see see see. Ah, then Suntec and Capital Week. Ah, is more of office, and they don't have blue chip status. They are under the reserve list. So CICT, MPACT, FCT, these three, you sleep well at night, ah. And then you know weekend Singaporean nothing to do. They must go your shopping mall. Yeah. I believe I want to shop my employer. I don't have access to financial information. It's called insider, uh, trading like that one, ah. Then who who is your employer? You tell us, then we shop for you. Just kidding. Wow, Bitcoin seventy two k already. Yeah, ML going international already. Global. My name will become ML Global. ML Global Asset Manage Management, yeah. Alina Lim, welcome, welcome. Jen Shah Talk Food, will you buy CLCT or Fortune or Link? Uh, this different exposure leh. CLCT is China shopping mall. Fortune is the Hong Kong neighborhood shopping mall. Then Link is a shopping mall and office also have uh in in so all is different asset. So I'm a Singaporean now, so my base I will buy the Five Tiger General. Then the second four I will buy all three. I'll buy CLCT, I'll buy Fortune, I'll buy Wheat, uh, Link. I'll also buy Hong Kong Land. Hong Kong Land is more towards office ah, rather than shopping mall. I would say they are equal lah, like CLCT, Fortune, Link, and Hong Kong Land. These four they are equal, but they are Hong Kong and uh China exposure. Oh, Chief HR sold a lot of shares. Ah, wow, your company HR. Sell already lah. Then you better sell also lah. Maybe the your company not doing well ah. Maybe the company going bankrupt ah, or the company results no good lah. Insider no first ah. Yeah, sell and you take money lah. Then you follow your HR sell lah. You must ask your HR to meet your ask your HR out for lunch. Then you have lunch with your HR. Yeah, just buy in ah. In is very dangerous eh. In is the triple leverage China ETF eh. Ink I don't recommend ah. Ink ink is very is the China triple leverage bull ET ETF ah. This is you see one year is down sixty percent ah. It's very volatile ah. It's a it's a gambler ah. I I I prefer M Chin ah. If you have the U S dollar, you want China exposure, buy M Chin. So is it only down twenty percent? Ink you you triple win or triple lose leh. Then this one the holding is very solid. It's like Alibaba, Tencent. Then they also have the big banks. It's a bit like Hang Seng Index. Banks and and tech, so M Chin is is the pick lah of the ETF. If you have US dollar, you want China exposure. If you don't want the banks, you only want Chinese tech. Then you go for K Web. Or K Web is all the software tech companies. No 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 hardware one. Yeah. Qing Shan Zai, 不怕没柴烧哇 Jaden, your your Chinese very good. Ah, break out at sixty dollar S E. Yeah, wow, you're all very good to know how to see the chart. I don't know how to see the chart. Yeah, yeah, Min Chin, yes, we all said manage fear and greed, lah. Be careful, yeah. Yeah, go keep patience. See so many board come back. Yeah, if board come back, then then board. Don't chase. If it run up a lot, don't chase. If the board come back, you board. You don't have. You 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 look at other boards to board. Ping Tuo Tuo jump six point five percent. Upgrade budget. Wow, Ping Tuo Tuo, I think very shady. I will be careful of, uh, Ping Tuo Tuo. Good food at Guangzhou ah, wow! I never, I only go before Beijing, Shanghai. Yeah, wow! You know ah, Hangzhou is coffee ah, built built coffee one is it? Oh, grab three dollar lah is where you want to buy. Master can explain why Capital Land invest? What is the holding for all its subsidiaries? Can I wait until so jealous? I did talk about Capital Land invest ah. The the gearing is high and and because it's a asset manager. And it's also it's half a set manager, it's half a read, so it's neither here nor there. So I I don't like capital land invest ah. I prefer to just buy reads, because you buy property is for dividend ma. That as simple as that. It's it's half a set manager, half a read yeah. Then you buy a set manager is for growth. You buy read is for dividend. So it's neither here nor there. If you want to buy a man a set manager, you can buy BlackRock, BlackRock in the U S market and double. Am I right? Yeah, so you can buy B B L K Bed Bed Rock. That that's a pure asset manager. Where you buy capital? Wow, this one so so high already. Fifty two high cannot buy. P twenty expensive already. But a pure manager is upper Bed Rock. 
then the capital land invest is half asset manager half read uh. lvnc i'm waiting to enter china mobile 6g and cloud uh, is the catalyst f- f- for it china mobile is actually very defensive one seldom have, have a sale one dim ch ccp meeting end today don't have bazooka i mentioned to you already they, they're not doing bazooka they they just want to like let the property market hold it there then they focus their firepower on target measures example the like ev industry la, green energy la, battery la, all this uh, is their focus they don't want to like uh, anyhow spend also they are very prudent la. but the analyst expectation is that they will continue to lower rates then we just wait for the news update la. Mm. Yeah, tall runner master. Do you prefer M Chin or or K Web? I prefer K Web. Yeah, I prefer K Web because in the U S market, I think there's dividend tax, so you don't want dividend. That's why you don't want M Chin in, in that sense uh. Yeah, you want to go more for uh capital gains. Yeah, so so that's all my sharing for tonight. Thanks all for coming. See you all tomorrow. Hopefully tomorrow night live. We will look at the CPI numbers tomorrow eight p.m. I start the live stream eight thirty. We look at CPI, then we see the US market will be sold down or not. Take care all. Bye bye. Good night.